गचायत सागतम सब करते सागतम हम सब करते सागतम आज हमारे बीच पधारे श्री माता जी आहंकार झुम झुम के झुम झुम के करते हैं सब करके स्वागतम आज हमारे स्वागतम पूजो आर माता जी दर्शन पाकर करते स्वागत दिल से गाता पूजो आर माता जी दर्शन पाकर करते स्वागत दिल से गाता प्रेम पुलों की माला बनाते हैं प्रेम पुलों की माला बनाते हैं स्वागत आगत स्वागतम स्वागत आगत स्वागतम हम सब करते स्वागतम हम सब करते स्वागतम निर्मल से विनय हमारी जीवन सुख से कर दे पारे निर्मल से विनय हमारी जीवन सुख से कर दे पारे आनंद प्रेम शांति सदा आनंद प्रेम शांति सदा तिकड़े करते इकड़े होते पंखा माजा चला व्यवस्थित पूर्ण है गाला कापूस ते खाली सरक तो लहान लहान से घर यू फॉर पूजा यू मस्ट यूज इंडियन गर्ल्स बेटर दे नो ऑल दीज थिंग्स बेटर दे से दैट नो बडी आस तो दे जस्ट सिट ऑन द फेन्स फुलवात करा मना फुलवात जस फुलवात करा मना
कापूस है त्यांच्या इतक्या दिवसानंतर सुद्धा अजून वाट लावत आहेत कमाल आहे नाही नाही तुम्ही पूजेचं तुम्ही पाहिलं पाहिजे या मुलीना सांगा त्यांना शेजून त्यांना माहिती नाही या गोष्टी ती वाट सारखी खाली घसरते है ना दे विल थिंक दॅट वी शुड नॉट कम फॉरवर्ड बिकॉज दे विल थिंक दिस पीपल आर टॉकिंग टू मच दिस इंडियन सो वेर दे हॅव टू कम दे शुड कम You can see yesterday's film that we have a tradition. You see, we know all these things, isn't it? This has been there in that country. So they, they, sh they should tell you and you should not mind that. They also have the same fear as you have, that they will say you have an ego. I don't know how to go about with anything. बरोबर कुठ बनार आहे त्यांना नीट सांगा त्याच्यातच फुलवाती लावा व्यवस्थित मोठाले वात असली ना आतमध्ये फुलवात की ती घसरत नाही नीचे रक्त तो राहिली Quite warm. एक साइड में रखो ना बैलेंस हो जाए नहीं नहीं एक इधर एक उधर अब इससे जला लो कहना इससे सगळा सरंजाम असून दिसतीत बीच वाली जरा आगे बढा दो बस ठीक आता तुम्हाला वाती करायचं शिकवतो मी आय टीच यू हाऊ टू मेक दिस ऑल राईट Today I was thinking that uh, we do the puja to Mahalakshmi would be better so that we'll understand what is Vishwanirmala Dharma is. As you know the Mahalakshmi principle lies within all of you in the center. 
and once you are fed up with the falsehood and also with the hypocrisy of people, you start seeking the truth within. That's how a new category of people are born, who are called as seekers, sadhakas. They are very different from others. They don't care for any material gain or any power, position. They want to seek the Truth, and this category is the one you are, and that's why you have come to Sahaja Yoga. This comes from your past lives also. For many people I think it's their past life which has brought the seeking in them. Also the affluence through which you have gone, you got fed up with it, and you are seeking the Truth. Also there are people like in India where the tradition is to seek the Truth from very childhood. You are told that money is not everything, power is not everything, it's all falsehood, you must seek the Truth. So you are ingrained with it. These are called as good conditioning, susamskara, bhumatakara. Now, if it is the just a fashion sort of a thing, that you get into fashion, that let us seek the Truth, because everybody is talking about Truth, let us have this uh, as a fashion, because everybody is doing it. See. Then it can be very dangerous. Such people get lost. I have seen people who were drug addicts, who came to us first in England, and I was surprised that they were really seekers, and they were not taking drugs because of fashion. They were just taking it because they thought by taking drugs they will get into their, their Mahalakshmi principle. Very intelligent, educated, very smart, I should say, people became hippies and they started taking drugs. And I discovered that their seeking was only that they should find the Truth, but they had no idea as to what is the Truth is. So this Mahalakshmi principle was born within them, sort of started manifesting, that beyond all this there must be something. This category of people are everywhere in the world. Especially I was surprised in Russia, where there is no talk of God, there is no talk of religion. They are even better than Indians in understanding such a world. So the conditionings of every country has also hampered the progress of Sahaja Yoga within you and outside. So now, first of all, to understand Mahalakshmi principle, we must know that we have two other channels into which we can jump. One is the left, another is the right. And it depends on what sort of a background you had in this life. Because of your background in last life, you have come to the right path. But last life is being covered by this life, the surroundings, the country in which you are born, your friends, parents, the society in which you lived has dominated <coughs> you in so many ways. That the Mahalakshmi principle doesn't express itself in that full power. We should really suck in 
everything else and put you onto the throne of a surgeon. So you find people, yesterday there were so many people, for example, very nice people, they were all seekers of many lives who came there. But we do not know how many will come to Sahaja Yoga and how many will settle down in Sahaja Yoga. How many will achieve doubtless awareness? Again, the same problem that they start getting into the habits formed by the left side or into the ego formed by the right side. Now for a Sahaja Yogi to keep his Mahalakshmi principle all right has to always introspect not to look at others, but to introspect. What am I doing? Am I in the left side or on the right side? Which side am I? What side I am following? Am I in the center? Now how will you judge? The best is to feel your vibrations. Feel your vibrations. But sometimes you go so far to the left or to the right that you just do not feel vibrations, your Mahalakshmi principle is not working. Then you go on. It's like a complete uh, derailment, I should say, a kind of a slope on which you just go on falling onto that. So all these conditionings we should watch out, in ourselves and in others, how we have got these problems that we slip out from the central path. Imagine a train is going on a proper railway track and suddenly it starts moving this way or that way. So where will it end up? Into destruction. But you have a way of arranging that this derailment can be brought back to the middle path. So in a very detached way, if you look at yourself like a witness and see for yourself, not about others. Even when I give lectures, people start saying, Oh, Mother is saying about somebody else. No, I am saying about you, yourself. So you watch out that are you in the center or are you going to the left or to the right? First of all, those who are in the center should not have any physical problems, should be able to completely cure themselves. If not others, they should be able to cure themselves. Secondly, a person who is in the center is a very peaceful person. He is never angry. He might put up a show that you are angry but he doesn't get involved into anger or any emotions whatsoever. He just watches and he can act, he can act uh, to be in that feeling of temper, or so lust, greed, anything, but just to act because sometimes this acting is needed so he can use it. But you should be sure first of all, that you are completely detached. So first of all, before acting, you must become a master of acting. And for that, you have to become yourself. If you become yourself, then you are a master and you can see where are you going. Now, the difference between a Sajogi and a Sahaja Yogi who is like this, as you say, is this, that he is capable of going to the left or to the right. They are not solidly Sahaja Yogis. Now they go on like this and there is no progress. Imagine any aeroplane which is wobbling like that will be on the ground only, nobody will be able to put it up. 
in the air because God knows what time, when will it fall down. So for any machinery we have to fix it up properly first before we start working it out. So to fix up our Mahalakshmi principle you have to see that your physical being is all right, is normal, no problem. I'm not me meaning uh, the modern ways of looking at health, but that you should feel healthy and happy. You should feel that there's no problem with your physical being. But if you are a complaining type, I am here painting, I am painting there, then there's something wrong with you. This is the first criteria that you are in the center. Then your attention should be more towards nature, how the nature is, how it is blossoming, how it is working out. It should be towards the sky, stars and things, just to enjoy all the creation that is around, just to enjoy it. That's an enjoyment uh, which is really so surprisingly deep when you see something beautiful, a scene or something, you go to a very beautiful place, then a kind of a joy that pours in you from your sastrara, that also you must experience. Also you must experience your thoughtless awareness. That is, when you look at something beautiful, you should suddenly become thoughtless. Just start seeing it, the whole joy will start pouring on you. Then. Another thing is that you should not differentiate between religions. You should not condemn any religion. But the people who are stupid and call themselves religious, they can be condemned because they are stupid. They have not followed the principle of religion at all. They are not realized souls and that's what they are making a mistake. So that's all right. For example, churches can be condemned, but not Christ, not the Bible, not at all, never. So when you see to the roots, roots are all right, but now, as I said, that these flowers have been plucked by people, they are fighting. So you should never condemn any incarnation, any uh, religion, any prophet, I mean, you will not condemn. It's not a question of I'm saying you don't do it. You will not just do it. You will respect all of them automatically because now you are born into it. If you say are a Christian, you will respect Hindu scriptures. If you are a Hindu, you will respect an Islamic Quran. That has to be there. If it is not so, then please know that you are not yet a surgeon. There should be no malice about any religion whatsoever. No religion has done any wrong so far. It's the people who follow them in a wrong way, use it for money, use it for power and also are stupid. For them it's different. But for you every religion is your own religion. So we cannot be fundamentalist. We cannot fight for fundamentalism. Vishwa Nirmala Dharma, which is based on the Mahalakshmi principle, is the essence of all the religions, the truth of all the religions. And we seek with our pursuits what are the common points in all these religions. We try to neutralize which are not common points and find out with our uh, research, pursuits, that this one was not the correct thing, but is not in the religion. People are following it. There are so many things you can find out. If in the Bible, if you remove Paul, you will cleanse most of it. If Paul is not there, I tell you, most of the Christianity can be cleansed out because he started confessions, he started all this nonsense, he started making pe people feel guilty. I mean, it uh, and 
the treating women as nothing. All Mr. Paul has done it, and he had no right to be there in the Bible because he never knew Christ. He was an epileptic, and he saw some cross means some sort of a, I don't know how far it is truth, but he said he saw a cross, so what? Seeing the cross doesn't mean you become the cross. Also he wanted to jump on the platform. Nice platform is made all right for you, and he has powers, and he wants to have powers, so he jumps on the platform. Then he organizes Christianity. All his mistake. Never in the Bible is said, never Christ said that you should organize Christianity, nor has He said that you should confess or you should feel guilty. All the time He has been talking of forgiveness. In that short time also He has given the truth to us. But, I mean, if somebody wants to interpret, then it goes wrong. So this, another point of a Sahaja Yogi is, whatever I say, they don't have to interpret, they know it, exactly what I say. If they start interpreting, then there's something wrong with them. Their brains are not all right, they are not normal. You cannot interpret Me. Whatever I say, I say in a very simple English language. I do not use Shakespearean language or something like that. I modulated My standard of English up to the normal, common people's language. And if you start interpreting it, that means something definitely very, very wrong with you. There's nothing to interpret. I am saying straightforward thing which need not be interpreted. This is a very important thing. But many Sahaja Yogis who are half baked, I should say, start interpreting it because they think they have brains to interpret. You have no in brains of that caliber that you can interpret. There are no interpretations, whatever I have said, I have said it, and there is no need to interpret. This is one of the signs that you are not in the center, either you have been possessed or you have become egoistical. So one, to keep yourself in the center, to be solidly surgeries. First of all, there should be no interpretations of what I say. If you think that I am meaning something else, you can write to Me. But don't interpret and start a big organization against Sahaja Yoga. This is the greatest mistake that people do. I have told many people that you should not give lectures about Sahaja Yoga. Because once they start giving lectures, also sometimes they get into derailment. Either they get egoistical or they say things, as they say, out of their hats, which I have never said, which are not to be said. So unless and until you are a solid Sahaja Yogi, I think you should not talk about Sahaja Yoga, best is to give Realization. Though you are half-baked, you can give Realization, that's one point for sure. And those who will get, will remain Sahaja Yogis. I have seen people who have given Realization to others are gone cases, while those whom they have given are perfect. Now, when somebody gives you the Realization, he is not your guru by any chance, he is not your guru and have no sort of a awe or an obligation towards that person who has given you Realization. If you do that way, then the ego of that man won't go. And you will have conditioning. You will always stand by that person, though he has done wrong, Though he is absolutely not Sahaja Yogi, you will stand by that person with him, you also move to the direction in which he has moved. So in Mahalakshmi principle, one has to be careful absolutely to see where are we going. Now the group system starts also with the same. There is a big fraternity of Bhuts, I must tell you. If you go to the left, all the leftists will join you. If you go to the right, all the rightists will join you. Then they'll fight among themselves and get out of it. 
Now for Sahaja Yogis who believe in fighting back, in grouping back, they should know they have derailed. Maybe they were very intelligent, they thought they could do that, maybe, but none intelligence, none of them are above the Divine Intelligence. But when you start moving out of Mahalakshmi thing, you become like a common person, even worse than a common person, I would say. So then you are grabbed by the negative forces which are around us. Just like all others are grabbed, you are also grabbed. There are conditionings which also we should see, do we have. Uh, say, a Western person must see Western conditionings very clearly. What are these conditionings? Because we are seekers of Truth. We do not belong to any country, we belong to the universe, Vishwa Nirmala Dharma. We do not belong to Australia, we do not be belong to Brisbane. You see, the, this belonging becomes so small and so mean that ultimately it will become we belong to this street and then we belong to this room and we belong to this bathroom. Start going down, down, down so much while it is Vishwa Nirmala Dharma, means it is a universal religion. We belong to the universe. We are part and parcel of the universe, not only belonging to one place or one location. We cannot. Now we have gone into eternal life, we have gone to something that is unlimited, so we belong to this universe. Once you realize that you belong to this universe, you should also know what conditionings are still sticking on to us from this country, from this culture, from this uh, place, from this household, from this family. Like a little lotus that comes out of the mud, slowly, slowly it throws away all the mud is that is sticking onto it. Ultimately it comes out the very clean flower. From the mud it gets to the water, cleanses itself and comes out as a beautiful flower, absolutely fragrant. And then it spreads its fragrance all round so that that mud also gets fragrance. That's your job. That's what you have to be. Because you are not seeker of truth for yourself, but for the whole world, because you belong to Vishwa Nirmala Dharma. This Mahalakshmi principle is not for you alone, but it is for the whole world. And you have to give it to the whole world. So now we are here forming a new kind of a race, a new kind of a society which is enlightened, which is uh, standing on the Truth and Love. Of course, it, you must understand that there should be compassion. Look at that child. I got. That's another condition of the children here. They must do something to get hurt. It's very common. All the time they do things that will hurt them. They cannot sit quiet. It's very surprising. In India you find children will sit quiet for three hours, four hours, as long as the pujas are. Now here the children are, I don't know, but I'm going to find out a solution for this. They just cannot keep quiet. And now in America they are suffering from overactivity, it is a disease. It's a disease now. They don't know what to do with the overactive children, they are overactive. But I think I'll be able to find out some solution for that. But as far as you are concerned, you are your own solution. You can watch yourself. You want to be people who are spiritually very well equipped. For that equipment, you must see yourselves, where are you, what are you doing, what's your style of life. A solid Sahaja Yogi or a Yogini, everyone knows all over the world, they're solid, nothing can deter them. And you can also know about yourself, it's not that you cannot know. All of you can know yourself very well because now you are 
quite sensitive and you have your own centers enlightened by Mahalakshmi principle. The Kundalini has definitely enlightened your Mahalakshmi principle. So you can always make out where are, what my chakras are, how are they catching, where are they catching. Instead of avoiding that, you just work it out, what's the problem, where is the problem. Once you work it out, then you'll be surprised that as soon as your desire goes inward, the Kundalini itself will gush through and she will cleanse your chakras. As I was telling you, we do not know our powers. Only one thing you have to do is to desire. You have to desire that let my, my, my vibrations be all right, let my chakras be cleared out, let me be in the center, in the balance. Just you have to desire. I mean, it's such a simple thing to desire, but that also we cannot do. Our desires are something else, not what we have to be. Just you have to desire that let me be a clean surgery, let me be a solid surgery. There are mediocres who can never be, I'm not talking about them, but so many can be very high up, can be very high up in Sajoga, but their desires are not yet being fully manifested, that is a damping effect of so many things I have told you about. So if supposing you have to catch the plane, then you don't get down on the way somewhere and stay out. In the same way when your Kundalini has to rise, you can see everything that's happening, but keep yourself aloof because you have to reach your point and that is through this Mahalakshmi principle. It's a principle that is so detached. It is the nourishing principle within us, which nourishes our centers, which nourishes our characters, which nourishes our religion, that is Vishwa Nirmala Dharma. It nourishes everything, it nourishes our brain, our intellect, everything it nourishes, this Mahalakshmi principle, above all it is the balancing, it balances. If you are overdoing something, then it gives you a kind of a push. If you are not doing anything, again, it works in such a manner that it balances you. So this is the guiding factor for you, this Mahalakshmi principle, which works out. Everything you can say that is balancing the equilibrium and the wisdom, as the light of Mahalakshmi principle starts, the wisdom dawns upon you. But the greatest of all is the love, love for God, love for Truth, and you thrive on that love. Just you are there. I mean, I asked him, why so many are here? They said, for the puja. Why? It's, it's a sign that you are great surgeries, that you are here because of puja, that you understand the value of puja and that you need the puja that you enjoy because it is nourishing to you, is a very good thing because that shows that you are very much there, you are very much understanding the importance of right things and you want to do it at any cost. All these desires are significant because they show that you are in the Mahalakshmi principle and you want to keep on that one. I would say there's a simple one that you can do, is just to be on my Kundalini. If you can, just try to be in my Kundalini, on my Kundalini, just put attention. You can, all of you can. Any problem, just put your attention onto my Kundalini and you'll be all right. You'll just become thoughtless because there's no thought. This is the best way to do it, is to just solve all problems by putting attention on my Kundalini and by that your ego will definitely dissolve. 
because then you will know that mother is doing everything, I am doing nothing, so why should I be proud of it? Also the conditionings will dissolve, because my Kundalini is absolutely pure. That's, it's not attached to anyone. It's not even attached to Sahaja Yoga. It's not attached to anyone. The job it has got to do is to nourish everything. If it can nourish, well and good. If it does not nourish, well and good. It depends on what do you want. You want to be nourished, all right, so the Kundalini is there, the Mahalakshmi principle is there, it will nourish you. But if you don't want, nobody is going to force you in any way. Nobody is going to jump on you or form a, some sort of a formidable uh, operation, nothing of the kind. It's just like a river Ganges, you can see, which is flowing. Now, if you want, you can fill up your pictures. If you don't want, she's not going to enter into your pictures. She's not going to come in your house and put in, get into your pictures. So there has to be a desire to get it, and that is what is called is bhakti. Bhakti is the desire, the devotion to get the joy of bhakti. It's such a beautiful thing. I wish I could do the bhakti to someone, but I can't do it. Because I see when you are in bhakti, you just get lost into it, so much you enjoy, such an enjoyable thing. Then you don't think, you just enjoy the bhakti, and that's what is the most uh, coveted, highest uh, state, where you are just one with the Divine and just swimming in the ocean of joy. So this Mahalakshmi principle is to be preserved and has to be always watched and looked into. And the blessings of Mahalakshmi are so many that I tell you, I cannot even tell them in one lecture, I'll have to give at least ten lectures. But you yourself know what are the blessings of this Mahalakshmi principle is. The greatest is the complete self-contentedness, absolutely self-content. You don't want to grab something, you don't want to run after something. It's just self-content. You don't want any publicity, you don't want any comfort, nothing, you are comfortable in your spirit. This is the greatest blessing of this Mahalakshmi principle. And if that is so, then why not we look after our Mahalakshmi principle and forget about the rest? Last of all, when it enters into your brain, then the Virata is manifesting and you become collective, absolutely collective. Such a beautiful thing is to be collective. There was a girl who went to Sicily and she was in a restaurant eating something alone and then she looked at somebody else and that girl also looked at her and this one got up and came to her and she said, they were not bearing batches, they said, have you been to Sri Mataji? Yes. Have you been? Yes. We are Sajogis? Yes. And then they just embraced each other with such joy in a far-fetched place somewhere in Sicily, in a, uh, some restaurant, imagine. They just got lost. The, the feeling of oneness, the brotherhood, the friendship is so great and so joyous. You don't then consider from what country you are, from where do you come, what is the color of your skin, or uh, what is uh, the religion you had followed, what your parents are. You just, you just enjoy meeting people. This friendship, this joy, comes from the same Mahalakshmi principle she, when she enlightens your Sahasrara. In the Sahasrara you get this feeling of the whole, and the feeling of the whole is something so great. Individualism people talk, but it is against the principle of whole. Who do not know the whole, you see, talk of individualism. 
This individualism, which has worked all kinds of dangers for us now, we have to know that we are one with the whole. Of course we are uh, individuals in the sense that we, we have different, different faces, different clothes, different living, different uh, relationships, but we belong to the whole. And this Virata's feeling that we are part and parcel of the whole gives you complete peace and complete protection. You never feel that something can happen to you. No. Some accident will take place, all right, will take place, but nothing will happen to me, I am a surgeon. So many people have gained like this by allowing themselves to be completely looked after by this Mahalakshmi principle. Just surrender to the Mahalakshmi principle means that you give up your ego and you give up your conditionings, you give up both the things, just surrendering to your Mahalakshmi principle. That's why Mahalakshmi is so important. May God bless you all.